Well, good day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So, we'll keep on trucking with these arbors. Um, we've got one set up in the lathe now. Uh, this one and the one in the lathe are a face mill arbor. So, all we have to do is drill and tap the half inch UNF thread uh, just in the end there on both. So, that's to fit uh, one of these uh, screws here to retain the cutter. We've got that, we'll get that done. Two there ready to go. Oh, we've got to screw cut this one as we explained last week. Now the ER40 collet holder, ER40 to R8, we've got to screw cut there and do our internal features. Now, I did get a bit carried away last week and I actually made three more of these. So, We've got four of them all up, so <laughs> we'll see how we go. So, over to the lathe, we'll get this, these two holes drilled and tapped, and then we'll start screw cutting. Okay, so we have our R8 right face mill arbor mounted up in the collet chuck in the fore jaw. So, and we're just using a steady rest to keep everything running true on the end here. So, just a matter of Slowly wind in the steady wrist, just till it makes contact. Just very light finger pressure. What I'm looking for is so when the fingers are only just just coming into contact, just with very light. About right there. Okay. <coughs> so we want to drill our hole um, about an inch and three quarter deep, right. and we'll be running cooling. Tapping drill size, which is 11.5 millimeter for half inch UNF. small countersink the chamfer on the beginning of the hole That's enough just to help the tap start a bit easier Swap over, we'll put our tapping head in. Make 
sure we're on our slower speed. So we've tapped that to three quarters of its depth and we'll, we'll finish that by hand as we don't want to bottom the tap out in the hole. So that's that one done. So the next stage with these is we'll set them up in a collet chuck in this small south bend and we have to recut the 60 degree chamfer there for the centre. Now, We've already just cut it with the 60 degree bit there before we tapped, as you've seen, but I'd rather recut them with a tool and the other lathe as that'll give us a truer centre because we will be using this angle for the centre to pick up on when we grind these. So. Okay, we've just got an end mill set up in the south bend here. Before we use this steady on our arbors, we just want to true up the ends of the fingers. They've had a fair old hammering over the years, so all I'm going to do is clamp that down. We'll start the lathe and we'll just gently tighten down on the fingers. That's beautiful, that's got it. On our fingers, we've also filed a chamfer on them all on both sides, so that when we run the bigger diameter parts in, picking up off a full wide area not just a little point on either side so we'll get a tool set up and cut these um, chamfers for the centre okay a quick way to set our compound to an accurate angle a bit closer than by looking at the divisions at the degrees so our angle we want is 30 degrees so we get punch some numbers into the trig calculator so we've just selected side B 750 the reason we've selected that is just a random number um, why that one is because side A comes out less than half inch because half inch is the travel of our dial indicator so all we need to know now that side A 433,000 that is the reading which we'll pick up off the dial indicator once we travel a length of the hypotenuse on the compound here. So we advance the compound 866 thou. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 866. Now our reading get it without the light. <laughs> I 
Okay, we're, we're as close as to 433,000. Probably half a thou over. That, that's neither here nor there over that distance. So yeah, the, the, the more accuracy that we can get on our all of our measurements, you know, centre angles, um, it's the only way we're going to maintain any accuracy on these parts. So it does pay to go the extra steps to ensure that. So anyway, we'll get our a tool in and get our centres cut. Now we've cut our first one, so that's come out quite well. So what we've done is put a protector in it. So we have this little land that's been machined into it and that keeps the very corner of the centre below the end of the part and it, it helps pre um, it will help that from getting damaged. So now another interesting thing when I was talking about parts moving, well we've got one here. This one's moved as well. So we're gripped up and clocked up tight on this uh, diameter here. Now normally you can just tap these around a bit to, to get it to bring it back true. We can't do that with this one. So because it's got a slight warp, must have a slight warp in it. That's no problem. So all I'm going to do is I'll get four little pieces of copper, thin strips of copper, and I'll just put them under the jaws and we'll just re-indicate it in and that will allow us to tap this around true. Otherwise if we clamp down with the steady it's just trying to flex everything through the headstock bearings of the lathe. It's no good. So we'll get um, we'll get the copper in and get it reset up. And... Okay, so we've got four little pieces of copper in there, just at the very uh, ends of the jaw. They don't go the full length, so that will allow some movement there. So we've we've already indicated this in. So all we do now is sort this end out. I'll try and do this one handed. Too far there. Yeah, too far. Okay, I had to put the camera down to do that, I couldn't do it one handed. It, uh, that's not running too bad there now, we're... What are we, about half a thou, three quarters of a thou. So that's, that's not too bad, that's quite acceptable. Better than what it was, so we can clamp the steady down now and cut our taper. So filming on this little lathe, there's very limited spots to put a camera, and I'm not in one of them right now. So we'll just take a few light cuts. Put that little landing into the uh, protection ring.
Okay, there you have it. Okay, we've got our star barber we're doing now. So we're just facing off this face and we're just cut putting in a um, small grinding relief right in the very corner here and then we'll um, tackle a left hand thread. give us a bit of clearance on our grinding wheel in the corner there when we grind it. Okay so we'll get our area to be threaded down to diameter and of course this will stay oversized because that will be ground. We'll just get a measurement back 1.1 inches thread so currently we're still on our oversized roughing dimension yeah, so we're 10 thou up so we'll take 10 thou off Half a thou up, I'd like to go a couple of thou under. chamfer on the other end. Okay we've just cut in a little uh, thread relief just there because it is a left hand thread and that's where we're going to be starting our thread in. So our, our tool will come into there and we'll thread towards the rear. Okay, we're getting ready to screw cut our part there. So we're going to be cutting a 1 inch UNS thread, 14 TPI, class 3A. So that's a class 3 thread, it doesn't really have that much slop in it. It's quite a tight thread, high tolerance thread. So what we have to ensure, I'll just use a vernier height gauge. Must make sure our tool is dead on centre. 
and also I use an indicator to make sure the tool is square 90 degrees to the part where screw cutting. So we'll set the lathe gearbox up and then we'll uh, do a scratch pass. The other thing you've got to make sure you get right too is, is the OD, make sure you're within the tolerance of the thread that you're cutting. You know, a few thou under is, is, is fine, it's not really a drama. So We're going to be using, um, measure the pitch diameter as we don't have a nut for this thread. The nut I was going to use, I'll show you. <laughs> So, anyway, I'll get the lathe set up to cut 14 TPI and bring you back. Okay, so we're cutting 14 TPI. So we have lever B, the left hand lever in the B position, which is this one there, and in the number 8 hole. So we count along 8 holes, which is number 8. So that's in position there. The other thing we have to make sure is that we have the correct gear train set up too. So we've got a 40 going on to a 127 which is driving a, a 120 and back onto a 40. That will give us 14 threads per inch. Now the other thing we, we need to look at is this threading dial. Okay, we're cutting uh, 14 TPI, so we can come in on any numbered line 1 to 8. Uh, any on our dial up here. That's good, I can't see it. <laughs> but yeah, I can come in on any, any line. So and we're cutting left hand thread so our lathe will be running in a standard direction but we'll start the cut from here and run back across so let's um, do a scratch pass let's make sure we're cutting the right size okay
Okay, Carlos Spring passes there. Okay, I had to <laughs> hold the camera by hand to do this, so we're shooting for 1.010 and we're 1.017, so we've got 7 thou to go off the diameter of the thread and then we're within our nominal range for a class 3 thread. As we don't have a nut to check it, this is the, the best way to do it. We'll take our 7 thou off and we should be there. Just going to swap our insert over for the last couple of cuts. It's been in there for a while this one so being with the type of material this is I want to give it the thread every chance. Okay. So what we say we had seven thou. Okay, it might sit you back up from the other way. You can 
and see what's going on. Otherwise, we'll just get a, a view of my hand trying to hold the thread wires. Okay, so our, we're on nine thou up on one inch, so one point double zero nine. So that's pretty well smack in the in the middle of the tolerance of one point zero one one seven is the maximum, and the minimum is one point zero zero seven eight. So eight thou up is the minimum, and eleven thou up is the maximum. So we're we're a good range. We're in the middle there. So um, thread looks good. So we're happy. Okay, when I mentioned, uh, was talking about this nut. Uh, earlier on, how I don't really have a, a nut, I'll have to make a nut. This is um, an Im import arbor from the land of the country that produces all the diseases. <laughs> and the, the nut rattles around like a bloody cock in a shirt sleeve. It's like a, a nut and bolt, you know, uh, you get like that, a galvanized nut and bolt, well, that's the type of fit it is, absolute crap rubbish. Even when you look at the um, profile of the thread up against the uh, pitch gauge, it's just rubbish. So this cut, this thread here is cut way under size, and that their nut it does go on my thread. It's actually not a bad, not too bad a fit. That's quite a good fit on this thread here. Still a little bit loose to what I want, but. I'm going to have to make a new nut anyway because the finish on the inside of this nut is absolutely atrocious. You just run, you feel all the burrs and crap. It just hasn't been cut properly. Cheap mass production crap from the land that produces crap tools. So anyway, we had a win with our thread. She's smack on the money. So we will have to make a, a new nut. So that will have to be a class 3B nut to, to suit a 3A. 3A A for external and the classes with threads B as an internal. So, this is pretty well, I've just got to take the sharp edge off there, just give that a little polish up. Remember this area is still oversized for grinding and uh, that's pretty well this one done I think. So, okay we've got a little round nose tool here so we're just going to blend in a bit of a radius just in this thread relief here just to eliminate these sharp corners.
Well, the only thing now left on this, we've got a keyway to cut in there, quarter inch keyway. So, apart from that, this one's done. Okay, I'll just give you a quick rundown on how we calculated our size to measure over the wires. So, as we stated, we're cutting a 1 inch 14 TPI UNS Unified Special because it's 14 TPI. A standard thread in that sort of realm is a 1 inch UNF, which is 12 TPI. Now, that being the case, we can't look up um, in the charts that are available that I have for our dimension over the wires that we need, which is this dimension here. So that's our um, minimum and maximum dimension measuring the pitch diameter with wires. So I did actually cheat and look it up on the online formula and I went ahead and cut the thread. I better sit down and actually because I don't always have full trust in some of the formulas. I mean, I have found mistakes before. So I dragged out the um, equation, which is M equals E minus uh, 0 0.86063. Um, and then you uh, multiply that by the pitch and add three times the wire size. So M being the measurement over wires, E is your pitch diameter, which we have down here. That's our range for a class 3A thread. Multiply those together and add on three times the wire diameter, and you'll end up with this equation here, which is 1.0102, which falls in the range, um, in the middle of the range of what we have here. So we picked um, our pitch diameter because we have a range of um, a lower and an upper we just picked um, 0.952 or somewhere in the middle so that's the number we used in the equation so that's what's given us our final measurement there so as long as we're pretty close to that um, we'll be in the ballpark for our 3A class thread so we'll just swing around we'll get a final measurement and show you how we take the measurement over wires and we should come up pretty close to that okay now my thread wires for 14 TPI says to use a 45 thou wire which is rather a little bit on the on the big side um, when I looked it up in machinery's handbook the recommended wire is 42 thou and the minimum wire is 40 so I don't have a 42 I only have a 40 and 45s so 40 is closer to the recommended so that's what I've, I've gone with so this gets a bit of a handful so we just pop pop one wire in um, up there and the other two wires just follow the thread around One in there, underneath, and the other one in the next thread across. And of course one falls out, as they do. So it's just very gingerly, just getting a rocking, going back to the forwards to get a feel where we're at. Get in there. <laughs> So I've got a good measurement there, good feel there. So 
So we've ended up with. Oh shit! Bump the camera. Um, One point zero eight two. So we we're we're towards the lower limit. We should have been um, ten thou up on one inch. So we're a thou and a half. Um, below where we were shooting for, but we're still above the lower limit for the class three three A thread, so we're still good. So I guess I'm going to polish the threads up a little bit. A bit more came off there, so. But yeah, basically that's how I've gone about getting my sizes for the thread. Well, that's about all we can fit in this week. We've run out of time again, as usual. I was hoping, as I mentioned last video, to have all these ready for heat treatment um, in this video. But then, of course, went ahead and made another three more um, ER40 collet chucks. So, the destination of these We'll find out later on. Um, we'll see how they come out after machining, after the threads and the accuracy of them all. So all our parts are coming up really spot on. So it does pay, take the extra time, pay attention to the accuracy of your work and you will, you'll get a good result. So we've got a few more machining details to carry out on these, I'll do a lot of them off camera but I will save certain steps for the next film and hopefully by the end of next video we'll be able to start some heat treatment <laughs> oh well, cheers and uh, to all my subscribers, thanks there's uh, noticing a lot more coming on board now so that's a good thing so We'll try and keep the channel going in the direction that it's going, um, doing a bit more stuff that is a bit less common in the machining sector on YouTube. 